Hi everyone, it's Margie from the Westchester Children's Museum and I am here once again to do a fun activity with you this week. And again, we're changing it up a little bit. We know that you're going back to school soon, so we want to give you some really fun special activities to do before you go back to school. So this week's activities actually are all about you. They're about you. What makes you so special? What types of things created you? Like your genes. So today, we're actually going to be detectives. But before we get started on doing our special fun fingerprint project or activity, I want to ask you a couple questions. So what do detectives do when they go to a crime scene? To try to figure out what happened in the crime or who did the crime. Who are the special people or scientists that have to analyze some of the ed evidence? So we're gonna find out. Today we're gonna talk a lot about fingerprints. And you are actually going to make your own fingerprints and analyze them with a magnifying glass. Because every single fingerprint is very unique and very special. Every single fingerprint looks different. Even on every single finger of my hand. And as you get older, your fingerprints actually stay the same, even though your hands may get a little bigger. Those fingerprints stay the same. So let's talk a little bit more about the special people that help on those crime scenes. So let's talk about what a forensic investigator does. What does a forensic scientist do? They actually, at a crime scene, they want to see if they can find things that will help them solve the crime. Some of those things could be blood, DNA, fingerprints, things like that. And that will help them find the truth about the crime or the person who did the crime. But what else about forensic scientists is that they combine three sciences so biology, chemistry, and physics all together to help solve a crime. So that's a little bit about a forensic scientist. So let's get ready to be forensic scientists. What you need is you need some clear tape. You need a paintbrush or a um, makeup brush. You need a pencil. You need some white paper, and that paper can just be printer paper. You need a really good magnifying glass. You need some cocoa powder. And you need a glass or a glass jar. So the things that you need for the extra activity that I spoke about is the cocoa powder, the glass, or glass jar and a paintbrush or a makeup brush. And that's what you need to do our fingerprint activity. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to take your left hand and you want to trace it with your pencil. So all around Trace my left hand, and there's my left hand. The next thing that you want to do is you want to rub, take a pencil, and you want to really rub some of the graphite on a piece of paper. So I want to really rub it, 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 rub it. Okay, I'm rubbing, and then I'm going to, you want to take your pinky, and you want to kind of just rub it in it. Okay, and then you can see that on my pinky. Then you want to take a piece of tape, cut off a small piece of tape about an inch, put it on your finger, let it sit there, press it down, and then you want to pull it off. 
And then you want to put it down on your pinky on the paper with your hand. Now you can do this for every finger. And then what you want to do is you want to take your magnifying glass and take a closer look at your fingerprint. We're going to try to lift a fingerprint off a glass. So we needed cocoa powder and we needed our paintbrush or makeup brush uh, to do that. We also need scotch tape and a glass. So the first thing you want to do is you want to kind of really rub your fingers together for a little bit. Maybe sing a song or something like that for maybe 60 seconds. Then what you want to do is you want to take the side of your glass and you're going to squeeze down tight for your fingerprints. The next thing that you want to do is you want to take a little bit of cocoa powder, just a little bit, you don't need much. Take your brush and then you want to brush over where you put your fingerprints very lightly. <gasps> I can see them showing up already. Then you want to blow away the cocoa. And the next thing that you want to do is you want to take a piece of tape and you want to put it right over those fingerprints. And I can see, ooh, I can see a few of them, but I'm going to try to grab this one that looks really good here. I'm going to put it over and then I'm going to pull it off. Next, I'm going to put our fingerprint on a piece of paper. So let's take a closer look and see what the fingerprint we just lifted off the glass looks like. So here are the fingerprints that I lifted off the glass. Wow. So a little bit more about fingerprints. No fingerprint looks exactly the same. Even twins, their fingerprints look different. And as we said, my five fingerprints on my hands, every fingerprint will look different. So just a little bit more, there's three different types of fingerprints. So there's the loop, the whorl, and the arc. Now the one that you're gonna see the most is the loop. That's the most common one. So those are the three types of fingerprints. I challenge you to look at yours. Take your hand and do all your fingers and look closely with your magnifying glass. And maybe you can see which type of fingerprint you have on each finger. I challenge you to ask your parents to do theirs. What types of fingerprints do they have? Do they look different for different fingers compared to yours? So have fun and be a detective. So know that when detectives or forensic scientists are, are looking at crime scenes, they're looking for DNA. But sometimes they can't find that DNA, so they look to fingerprints because that can attach to a person because nobody has the same fingerprint. So I hope you enjoyed the activity today all about fingerprints. And don't stop there. You can actually use some ink and dip your fingers in colored ink and make pictures. Maybe you can make a fall tree. Maybe you can make some animal creatures with your fingerprints. Or maybe you can make some flowers. So have fun. It's Margie from the Westchester Children's Museum once again. And I'm so happy to be here with you. And we'd love to hear any feedback you have about these activities. What are your favorites? What would you like to see? And I hope you have a really good day.